And this is where the Collins Cup story unfolded. The wonderful ex-bionic sphere here in Chamarine, the perfect venue to host this historic triathlon event. But before we get to the action, here's everything you need to know about the Collins Cup. Three teams. Team Europe. Team US. Team Internationals. 12 races, one athlete from each team battling out for points. <laughs> the winner of each race gets three points. Two points for second and one point for third. Well, don't use me for this one. <laughs> there are bonus points too for margin of victory. Half a point bonus for each of the two minutes you beat your competitors by. I'm coming for you. Bring it on, baby. The team with the most points will be crowned the winner of the inaugural Collins Cup. Let's start this party. Certainly hard to disagree, and there were absolutely no shortage of mouth-watering matchups as we approached the first race. Now for the women, the intense rivalry between Holly Lawrence of Europe and Ellie Salhaus of the Internationals was certainly one to keep an eye on in match four. Whilst in the men's draw, all eyes on the seemingly unbeatable Jan Fredino of Europe and his matchup with the US's Sam Long. Let's get you straight to the action. <laughs> And there we go, the start of the inaugural Collins Cup is on the way and this one has some incredible athletes in it. Daniela Riff, one of the greatest we've ever seen to do the middle distance in Ironman racing, Teresa Adam and Taylor Nib. What an incredible start this is and the incredible athletes. This one is a matchup we've all been waiting to see. Can Taylor Nib and Teresa Adam keep up with arguably one of the greatest we've ever seen, Daniela Riff? Well, Vicky, just near his camera here, we've got a Daniela Riff. Now, she has never been beaten this season yet, so that's a pretty good card to have, isn't it? Daniela's very rarely been beaten in about the last five seasons, I think. So she really does have everybody chasing her. She's a marked woman, but we've already seen here in that red cap, Taylor Nib of the USA, starting to stretch away from both Teresa Adam and Daniela Reese. And they're off. This is match two. They're starting, by the way, 10 minutes apart. Wow, just look at Lucy Charles Barclay go off there in the blue cap. And as you mentioned earlier, Vicky, I see that Katie Zafiris is breathing to the right, so she actually wouldn't be able to see what Lucy Charles Barclay is doing on her left. Yeah, so she's maybe made a slight tactical error there by not switching up and breathing over to the mm. other side, but she was also slightly impeded, if you like, by the start position she's got. She wasn't able to choose to start next to Lucy. She had to start a space away with Paula in between them, which meant there was no way for her to just move straight across and get onto Lucy's feet. And I think what we're seeing now is a split that's happened as soon as they've gone in. The first two kilometres of what is a 100 kilometre day, it's a half Ironman distance. Uh, Anne Haug, uh, Jenny Metzler and uh, Jackie Hearing are in. Once out the Danube, we're on the bike ride, up and down a motorway uh, four times. Um, and it's going to be fast. It's a brand new motorway, especially closed for the Collins Cup. And once we complete those four circuits, we'll dash off back towards the transition, where, of course, we will be out on the run. At an 80-kilometer bike ride, this is a half marathon, remember, a half Ironman, rather, remember, at 70.3, in all, a total of 100 kilometers. And then we're out on the run, running along the banks of the Danube again as we then continue back towards the x Bionosphere and the finishing line itself. There's a super atmosphere. We're here, we're just seeing Taylor climb out, get a handle on those stairs on the way out. At least you can use the railing, right? So that makes it a little bit easier. Um, you'll see her undo her wetsuit as she runs along, hat and goggles in the hand to just make transition as fast as possible. And we're away, and the Sky Lunch, uh, they say she's back to her best form ever since she had a very bad bike crash back in 2019. And off she goes from the transition zone, we're still waiting for Teresa Adam. So Holly Lawrence, Ellie Salthouse and Sky Munch underway in match number four. Remember there are 12? 
into the transition now, which were all laid out earlier today, of course. Everything is in place. They know exactly where the helmet is. And there's a few rules in here, Phil. You yes. need to get your wetsuit and your swim goggles and cap into the box that's right next to Katie there. As you see Katie Grant taking her wetsuit off around her feet, which is not easy, and then she'll have to put that into the box. Now, someone like a Katie Zafiris is used to this kind of a rule. This is what they do in the short course and the Olympics to keep now a clean transition. Knows, Some of our more specific long course athletes own. aren't used to that, and we could see penalties later on if that occurs. We've just seen Lucy Charles have a bit of a fumble there. We firstly saw her sit down to take her wetsuit off, which is definitely not the fastest way of doing it. Then she tried to move her bike before putting her helmet on, which she then corrected herself because she realised she wasn't able to do that. Then have to put the helmet on, collect her bike, and she lost a good 10 to 15 seconds there. Well, away, and I can tell you, our computer at the moment, showing all the predictions, is predicting a terrific battle here. But we were told Europe was going to walk all over everybody. Well, I'll tell you right now, Europe on the predictions have got ten and a half points, and USA, who, who were going to finish a far third, have got ten and a half points, equal first, and the internationals are on seven. Do you see them together there? Look at them, just absolutely locked together. Neither of them stepping down. Oh, this is phenomenal racing. Side I love by this. Side. <laughs> is there a lot of psyching go on in this situation between two people like this? I, well, I don't know. I would have said that this was not a sensible way to swim. No, but it's these not as, two, but we, we last saw them about five to ten minutes ago, and they were in exactly the same position, sort of locked together, drift apart a bit, bash back together again, hit the shoulders against one another, repeat. Oh, it seems great. like... That has been going on for a good 10 minutes now. So Absolutely. there was a rivalry before they started. They're going to come out the water probably disliking each other oh. even more. Match number six, and then all the women are now underway here in the Collins Cup. The men will follow shortly. And like the women, the top-ranked men in the world, gracing the waters of the River Danube. This is also predicting a very good match here. Out on course, we're getting some terrific battles. Now, there do appear to be storm clouds coming in from our camera shots, but from our commentary position, I don't know where the camera's taking those pictures. I can't see those clouds at all. That's Annie Hug coming out of the water there on our screen. The current Ironman world champion. Oh, maybe we're seeing a pass under the, under the tent there under the bolt camera, and we do. This is the first time that Ellie has now taken the lead. Yep, so now we're going to come back to that situation where we saw with Lucy Charles Barclay and Katie Zafirez, who is going to be the quickest in the actual transition area, who's going to get that wetsuit off the cleanest, who's going to get it in the box with nothing hanging out, who's going to get their helmet on fastest, and who's going to get themselves to the mount line first. What's your prediction, Vicky? You got it right the last one. <laughs> Oh, I think I, I will go with Holly because Ellie just went to the wrong box and Holly has done a little bit of ITU racing before. Well, look at that. There's three matching bikes there. Yeah. Uh, that would have been a little confusing, which is my Trek bike. But the name helps. Yes, yeah, so your big sign with your name on it should be a dead giveaway. They can't right. see it. It's the wrong side. There we go. We're seeing Ellie Salthouse have a little bit of a problem getting both her helmet and her visor oh, her on visor there. Her visor, off. yeah, she had that between her legs while she had to put the helmet on. So a little bit of a fumble, as we saw with Lucy Charles. It's not game over. This is such a long race that that's not definitive, but it has allowed Holly to steal a little bit of a march on Ellie Salthouse there. Just on match one here, we see Taylor Nib still out front, head down. She's got a nothing but clear highway in front of her. And as we can see there, that bike is a, is a traditional road bike that she's got her clip-ons attached to because we touched on it earlier. She's just very comfortable on this bike. She doesn't own a time trial bike and she's been quite clear about the fact that she didn't want to change things just before a race like this, having done so well at Boulder 70.3 on this setup. So she will be the only person we see today doing this. Um, but right now, as I hand over to Barry and Belinda, nice to see you here beside me in commentary box. It's still Taylor Nib out front. Matt one. Here comes the uh, pass, and that's Lucy Charles making her, her pass right there. And you can see the difference. Katie doesn't really look comfortable in that time trial bike. No, she doesn't. And, and you can see Lucy Charles, you know, has, Looks I mean, right she's done this for 180K at the Ironman. It's not an issue for her. The, the 80 kilometers, she'll feel very comfortable out on that very fast course. 
Yeah, this is the first time, first matchup we've seen all three women come out of the water together. So not only are we going to have two of them go through the bolt cam together and come into that transition zone really close to one another in the same way we see in that shorter distance racing, we've got all three of them as they stumble to get out over the banks of the Danube and up those steps. Well, I think Chelsea will be able to say for the first time in her career she led out of the water. <laughs> So we're back with uh, Taylor Nib here on uh, the match one, still leading the way, has not been caught by Daniela Reef. And I think at the moment, it looks fantastic. She's uh, looking comfortable, just taking on some fluids there. It's, a, it's such an unusual sight to see someone doing this kind of racing on a, on a road bike, but she's showing that it can be done. Well, the United States with another great start to their day here. Joss McCauley, who just got the call very late. So that's a great opportunity and taking the most of it for sure. Yeah, with Heather Jackson's withdrawal from this event, Jocelyn McCauley got, got the call up and uh, I had lunch with her yesterday. I think she's just pretty happy to be here, excited to be here. She's here with her older daughter as well and her husband. So yeah, we're seeing that. Oh, we're seeing Kat Matthews come out of the water now. So that deficit is well over a minute, really, back to Kat Matthews. So yeah, it's a, got, long, it's a long run. That, that's I, some time she's got to make up. A lot of technology here as you take a look across. And it is the United States, Europe, and the international still very close. And I think this is going to come down to the last couple of matches of the day. This is a lot of game changes and if anything Europe is probably best known for the bike so I think we're going to start seeing some changes some in the changes next hour place. out on that bike course. I agree. So with the women's races well underway it was time for the men to get going and get going they most certainly did. Race one Fredino, Appleton and Long. And here we are Jan Fredino. Arguably one of the greatest we've ever seen to do the sport of triathlon. Olympic gold medalist, five-time world champion, three of those Ironman world championships and two 70.3 world championships. Nobody has beaten him for several years. Absolutely extraordinary athlete. And Sam Appleton. Next, walking out. Sam Appleton has the ability to match Jan Fredino potentially throughout the swim, maybe the bike, and can run. So this is going to be a great matchup for Sam Appleton to see if he can stay with, arguably, the greatest of all time, Jan Fredino. And if you ask the next man, Sam Long, if he's going to keep up with uh, Jan, he'll tell you yes, because he's a very brash man, is Sam Long, but he believes in himself, and he is ranked number four from Boulder, Colorado. Very confident young man indeed, 25 years of age, 15 years younger than Jan Fredino. And so Sam Long, he's, he's really excited about this matchup. This is the one that he wanted. He's going to, to probably starter. lose a little bit of time, but let's see what happens in the swim here. And in we go. Conditions so different from when we had match one when the women got this Collins Cup underway. You can see the water now. No longer beautiful and glacial. It is choppy out there. The weather has changed absolutely incredible. I've just been running out at Inukville. It hasn't been much fun. I'm absolutely soaked uh, and freezing cold. The, ah. It absolutely changed. Look at that. Look at how choppy that is. And that is, look at that gap immediately open. Jan Fredeno and Sam Appleton. And now Ooh. Sam Long just has to limit that damage. Our uh, stat predictions suggest that they are going to come out the water together, maybe just a couple of seconds apart. But Sam Long, we know that his strengths don't lie in the water. He is the most phenomenal cyclist and runner. But we are predicting that he's going to come out the water something close to four minutes down. So don't be surprised to see Sam Long come out the water with quite the deficit to overhaul. But these two, Sam Appleton and Jan Frodeno, really brilliant swimmers. They're going to come out side by side, I think. Can they keep up with Gustav Eden in the water here? 
This will be the interesting one. Well, Gustav is obviously in Olympic form in the swimming. Uh, now, whether these guys, Kyle Smith is a phenomenal swimming background. Um, but here we are, straight away off the, off the pontoon, and all three of them together. So this is a great matchup. This is one to watch. Match, wow. match eight is going to be a really fantastic race to watch. Yeah, I think this could be another one where we do see all three of them swim together. They've all got quality swim backgrounds. There's no one here who picked up swimming in their later years, which sometimes does happen with the more middle long distance athletes that they, they take up swimming at you know, 20 onwards of age 20. These guys have all been swimming for a long time now, so this could be quite an even matchup in the water. As we go out onto the bike course where the conditions are changing all around the area just now and it's still unlucky for the women. This is match four we're looking at. They've been going a while now and this is Holly Lawrence after a big battle with Ellie Salthouse. Now not in any way is Ellie Salthouse giving up her chance here. She's still with Lawrence on the bike. This is one of the great matches we're getting of today with uh, Holly Lawrence and Ellie Salthouse. It's really been entertaining, hasn't it? The fact that neither one of them are giving an inch. They've both taken their turns at the front of this bike and not to say they're getting much of a draft off each other with the, the drafting rules, but there is a pacing that you get by sitting behind. You don't have to focus on how hard to push. You just focus on staying close by. This matchup is really fascinating, though. We have Sebastian Kinlay coming in with a little bit of an Achilles injury. That's his words. Then we have Lionel Sanders, six days off Copenhagen, Copenhagen Ironman. Iron Man, six days yes. off. He, ran, he won a 7.49 Ironman, and he's racing here six days later. And then we have Andrew Starkovic, not known for his running. So the fact is, this race is somewhat of the Walking Dead. We're going to see. <laughs> we're going to see who can perform after this Tell swim bike uh, on the run. Of the starter. So the match is underway, and this is match number nine of 12 matches here. And while we watch the men get underway, I can tell you in the match one for the women, Taylor Nib is now building a lead of approaching seven minutes as far as we know. It might even be more. Uh, ahead of the field. She's planning a lone trail back towards the transition for the run on the opening match of the day. Hasn't this been the story already of today? Just outstanding performance. The youngest in the field. Absolutely incredible with a 7.35 lead. Yes, well, she's the big surprise, of course she is, but she's come through transition. She's out on the run now. And Taylor Nib, who provided us with the big surprise in the swim, she's gone through the bike, increased the lead. Seven and a half minutes we've seen on the screen. And that is more than enough time in hand if she gets the finish uh, to claim six points bonus as well. All set. Match 10. In the water we go, two more uh, matches still to start. The gaps, remember, reduced to nine minutes for the men because of the rain delay we had between the men and the women's starts. The sky is getting bluer by the minute, uh, so we'll soon be singing the song, The Blue Danube. But the water is a little bit more difficult than it was for the women. So into the swim we go, and Max Newman takes the early lead here. Here comes Jan Fredino, match number seven, the first of the men out of the swim. Right behind him, we're going to see Sam Appleton coming into transition as well, just there rounding the corner. So split only by seconds as they came out of the swim. We were thinking that that was going to happen. They're both phenomenal swimmers. There's not usually anything to separate them. And uh, we're just seeing that again as Jan <laughs> oh. tips his helmet oh, up in all the water <laughs> that we've seen fall comes right out. So that's going to be a lovely, cold, damp helmet to put on his head right now. I know. Well, at least the rain feels like it's passed. Yes. But unfortunately for these guys, their helmets are now bathtubs. So we're now back with Lucy Charles. She's the leader in match two. She's opened up quite a gap now on Katie Zafiris. We saw Katie holding on really quite tightly behind Lucy Charles Barclay for quite a long time there. But in the last section of the bike, Lucy's managed to put in nearly two minutes on Katie. And Paula has caught up to Katie, so we're going to have quite the battle for the second and third. This is match number 11 of 12. 
It looks like the water's settling down a little bit now after the uh, bubble bath we had earlier on with the rain and some thunder. Well, it looks like Matt Hansen's quite quite comfortable to, to swim straight behind both of them. And already there's a little tussle there. We see Braden Curry go launching up into the air as he's swimming right behind Patrick Langer. Oh, there's been a crash here. This is Holly Lawrence, I think, who's on the floor. And this is a blow for the Europeans. Holly Lawrence has come off. The roads are very slippery. And she's in no risk to get back on the bike here at the moment. Now she's going to remount. Oh, has she got some technical problems there? Maybe her chains. My goodness, she's come down in the wet. There we go. Oh. oh. And Salthouse would have seen that the... happen right in front of her. They didn't even look at each other. And now the last match here. And as these three take to the start in the swim, uh, Team US 28 and a half points, Europeans 27 and a half. Now take a look at this because uh, Holly has now gone from first to last of the three in this heat number four or match number four rather. And we understand there was a crash. Oh, there's a bike crash. That's Lionel Sanders down. That is Sanders down, just as I mentioned, that technically he was a little concerned about this. Oh, he's got a limp. He's hurt himself. Lost his bottle as well. You can see Canadian Lionel Sanders from the international team is down. Let's see if he gets his bottle back because that's the nutrition that you're going to need throughout the course as well. Well, we saw, we saw Holly get back up. She has come off in both the leg yeah. and the elbow for Sanders. Well, that'll be interesting. He's back on. This guy feels no pain. He'll be back on it and going. He'll be back and going. There's the youngest woman in the race. 14 minutes. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you know, we know that uh, Danielle Arif is now moving herself up into second place. So showing that, you know, even when she's not feeling well, she doesn't give up. I mean, that's why you are a multiple world champion. Exactly. But everyone's going to be looking at this woman saying unbelievable well this woman to her credit yes there's some physical ability there obviously last year i spoke to her i got a call and said greg i just want to could i have an hour call with you i said oh yeah i'll talk to her had a long conversation with her went back home to my wife laura and said this woman is the real deal she is doing everything she can to become the greatest and i think at 23 we're just getting a quick little snapshot of what we're going to see in the future to have that maturity at 23 years of age I mean, that's scary. And here we are, Holly Lawrence, who went down quite hard at the end of the bike, is now, look at that determined face. Yep. And she that was a nasty fall. Do you think Holly Lawrence is up racing if this is not the Collins Cup? If this is, you know, a 70.3 on an point, average weekend in America? I don't think so. I no. think she's racing for a team right here. Yep. This, is a, this is not for Holly Lawrence. This is for Team Europe. And she knows that she can't afford to only get one point. So she's going to be chasing and chasing Sky Munch. She would have an idea where she is. But even more than that, she doesn't want Ellie Salthouse to get max points. Max points. That's exactly yeah. right. I think that's more to the point. And what was supposed to be a blue wave is turning red in the very first race of the day as the youngest woman led out of the water. There was question marks whether the greatest of all time on the women's side, Danielle Arif, could catch her on the bike. She, in fact, lost time. Maybe the fastest woman's time of the entire day is USA claims six. Taylor Nib comes in across the line. That spectacular six points. Wow, it doesn't even look that tired. What a phenomenal performance. Lucy Charles Barkley will get to the finishing line. She will claim the second wave today, and it might be one of the fastest times of the day for sure, as the multiple talented athlete getting the crowd up and pumped. Oh, it's great. She's working her way to the finishing line now, and it'll be the winner of the second match from the European team, Lucy Charles Barkley, the 27-year-old. Oh, I love that finish. Good on her. That was fantastic, finish. getting the crowd involved. My goodness, it doesn't even look like she's had a sweat. What's going on? <laughs> what it does look like that she really thoroughly enjoyed herself she out did. there. Lucy, congratulations. That was an incredible finish. I love how you were cheering the crowd up. How did that feel? Yeah, it felt amazing. I mean, I always love to get stuck in, have a bit of fun, and I want to get the crowd excited. So, yeah, absolutely loved it.
You also did incredible because you closed some points back for Team Europe, who are just behind the USA at the moment. How different is it for you and how important in terms of the fact that you've got Team Europe and you're not just riding for yourself? Yeah, it's a whole different pressure. I mean, normally, obviously, racing for yourself, you want to do well. But when you're racing for a team, a whole continent, it just means so much more. And I just knew I had to give everything so that we could get those points for Team Europe. So plenty of early drama and excitement with the weather playing its part as Taylor Nib and Lucy Charles Barkley got their respective teams off to impressive starts. But the big question was, could Team International respond? This is the matchup that Sam Long wanted. He wanted this, he wanted to have a go at the GOAT, if you want to call him, like we did earlier, which I'm not sure we need to do that. I think he is one of the greatest we've ever seen, but whether he is the greatest of all time, I don't know. But honestly, he wants to go, he wanted to have a crack and uh, I'm not sure how he's feeling about that now. <laughs> well, we're taking a look right now at match eight. So that is a combination of Cartier riding very well out there. Carl Smith yeah. on the front. As you can see right now, Carl Smith, Gustav Eden and Colin Chatier. I'm actually quite surprised that, that th these three are still together. I thought Carl Smith would have uh, tried to gap, gap them in. Now this is match nine. So we have Andrew Starkovic, who is all talk at the press conference and he wanted to lay it down. But Lionel, Lionel Sanders, Sanders, after his crash. Wow. Uh, that, they'll Still have there. to do a, you know, a plaque and a big statue in this pla in place <laughs> if he, he wins this thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, we know he's in great running form. Whether he can run well uh, six days after an Ironman, I don't know. But Andrew Starkovic, one of the greatest bikers mm. in our sport, and Lionel Sanders, eight seconds back after putting his bike down, having a crash, and he's back on and going. Looking up at match 10 right now. Ben Canute, uh, that man loves to put on the U.S. colors. Uh, and Ben look Canute, at that. Ooh, right oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. That is transition for you, everybody. Yeah. Yep. That was, he opened a lot of that in transition. I'm not saying it's all transition, obviously, but he no, was but able to it get gave the him gap. That lady needed. Now they can't see him. And he's gone. And Ben Canute can bike. I mean, My he's goodness. been a medalist at the 70.3 Worlds. Absolutely. You know? And this is uh, Patrick Langer, by the look of it. This is uh, our two-time Ironman World Champion. First man ever to go under sub eight hours at the Kona Ironman World Championships. And one of the best runners we've ever seen in the sport, especially at the Ironman. So there is uh, the Canadian right there having a very solid ride right now, Jackson Landry. And that's, uh, yeah, yeah, Justin Metzler. Justin Metzler. Yeah. And his wife, uh, yes, we've talked about her earlier, Jeannie Metzler, is having an outstanding performance for the international team. But he's just overtaken. So what, what happened there? Jackson Laundry's taken us forward, but he has to push, pull back. That gap has meters. to go back 20 to 20 metres. That's right. So nothing happened there other than he's like, well, I have to pull back. I might as well use that time to have mm. a drink um, and, uh, and let that gap open quickly. And you have about, what is it, 40 seconds or so to allow that gap to get back where it needs to be. Jackie Herring, the 36-year-old mother of two, has a big, beautiful smile as she will claim victory in match number three. There was a lot of talk, wasn't there, before about Team Europe being favourites and you were obviously pitched up against Annie Howe. How did that feel? It felt quite motivating. You know, it's fun to be the underdog, so... It's kind of no pressure, just go try and prove people wrong. Sam Appleton can run very, very well. He's a great runner, so he actually could get a really good neck and neck tussle here. I knew that he could bike like this, I knew he could, but from what we were getting earlier, I thought that gap was a lot bigger. And it, for, I think he's closed that gap to Jan Fedino. And Ellie Salthouse now coming home here for the first three pointer and in the bonus points available as well. Ellie Salthouse there has dealt with everything that's been thrown at her really well. She's delighted. You can see how happy she is to bring home that victory for Team International. They weren't predicted to win many races today. They definitely were predicted to win this one. That was uh, on paper Holly Lawrence's race, but Ellie Salthouse has proved fantastic today she's, she's done a, she's delivered an upset here and uh, you can just see there that she's given absolutely everything to, to bring it home to team international that's emma pallant brown just 
just crossing the finish line there for match five. She looked so strong on that run today, so smooth, didn't really put a foot wrong. We haven't seen anyone else behind her. We know Chelsea Sadara is not that far behind, but Emma didn't give her an inch, didn't give her a chance to get back into the race on that run. So that's another win there for Team Europe. The actual situation of those who have finished is that uh, Team USA are the leaders in the house, as it were, with 14 and a half points. Team Europe, 11.5, and International, 7.5. But there's an awful lot of changes can still happen here. Looking at Jan Fredino here, he's uh, he's married to. Um, oh, 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 oh! Now what's happened? He's over that see, corner. The roads are still very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's right across that zebra crossing there. It's um, and the white stripes are deadly. The white stripes, to a and you just saw that. He wobbled across, had to Did. unclip, mm -hmm. but he saved it. Saved and himself well. <laughs> saved he's it, and he's back up and rolling. You, you can see he's done that a few times before. Yes. He's, a, he's a pro at it. This is a nice spin to line for Cat Matthews. Uh, she's a physio in the army and high ranking of that. She's a captain, so it's a, you have to call your physio, sir, I suppose. <laughs> go for a massage, I don't know. But she's done terrifically well. Though. Well done uh, to Cat Matthews, and uh, more points in the bag for Team Euro. Just talk us through that sprint finish, because that, that, there was nobody there to race. Hey, it's not, we're racing the clock, aren't we, when we're in the lead, so uh, I have got two incredible athletes behind me, and I just wanted to, I wanted to show you what I had today, and uh, that's my sprint finish, I guess. So let's have a look here at the situation now. It's Europe 21 and a half, USA 21 and international nine and a half. The predictions are still in favour of the Europeans with 38.5 at the finish, 33 to Team US and International on 23. Now Jan, the man here has put on two seconds since they came through the transition. He's now got a five second advantage over Sam Appleton and you can see the projected points if he can keep it going. He doesn't like getting beaten, Jan, does he? In fact, <laughs> he, he doesn't get beaten for the last two often. years, I don't think. He most think. certainly doesn't like getting beaten, and lucky for him, it doesn't happen very often. No, it if doesn't. At all. I would say that right now, I'm not sure we're seeing Jan feeling his absolute best. I think if we're looking at his run form head on here, we can see his shoulders are quite high. He looks a little bit rigid, a little bit tight. I don't think Jan has really relaxed into his, into his running yet. This isn't Jan at his vintage best. Lionel Sanders is not renowned for his running looking aesthetically pleasing, but oh, it no. is super efficient. Whatever it is he does, it works. And uh, right now, we've just got this image of him. I wouldn't say it looks too different to normal, so no. that hopefully means he hasn't been too affected by that crash. This one, to me, has been one of my favourite races of the day. I was a little surprised to see Max Newman so far back, but having these two, Ben Canute, Daniel Beckergaard, coming off the bike now, this is going to be a great running race. And when you look at the point system, it matters yeah. who wins this race We're, and by how much. We are at that stage now where everything matters. The points matter, the bonus points matter. Mm -hmm. And you touched upon it there. Ben Canute is really a, a short distance and middle distance athlete. And Daniel Beckergaard is a middle distance and long distance athlete. And so they're kind of meeting in the middle here. Mm -hmm. Who's going to take the win? He really is a Lion King. This guy is, <laughs> is I, I, look, sometimes you can look at the way he's running form and we can dissect it and say, oh, it's not as pretty as, say, a Jan Fredino, but still, he moves across the ground incredibly well. His engine is just massive. And the guy just loves to race. He races on heart, doesn't mm -hmm. he? And he, we already saw he had that crash earlier on today. So not only has he got <laughs> potentially yeah. slightly tired legs from that Ironman six, six days ago, he had a crash today. He's raced in slightly adverse conditions. And here he is out front, giving it all, racing on pure heart, trying to bring back those points for Team International. So this is Gustav Eden we're seeing on the screen here, match eight. I think he's about a minute 45 ahead of Colin Chartier. There we go, 1.43 we're seeing as the uh, up-to-date graphic. Colin Chartier was actually not only a, a wild card, but he was a substitution of a, of a late withdrawal from Rudy von Berg, who unfortunately was ill. So he's only been in the on the start list for a couple of days, and he's, uh, he's delivering a great race here, only 1.43 behind Gustav Eden. But here comes Braden Curry, one of the better runners in the in the world of triathlon. We're getting feedback that we believe Patrick Lang is about 45 seconds back, so 
we'll have to see if it's somewhere between that 45 seconds to a minute and a half or so. We'll, we'll, we'll get a better idea in a moment. But this is a good transition so far for Braden. If you can get that shoe on and away you'll go. A lot of them have chosen to wear socks, which is something you can do. Sometimes having a blister or any kind of rubbing on your feet is not ideal. So you might put on the socks and it's worth the 10 seconds for comfort. Joe Skipper now getting himself ready for transition. You just saw him take, take his feet out of his shoes. You reach down, you slip your feet out, keep at speed. So then as soon as he gets to the dismount line, he can just jump off, make sure he gets both feet down before he crosses that line and away he goes. Got himself a nice buffer to go out on the run, but Jackson Laundry might be capable of closing that 148 if that's what it is to be. Now we're watching Jan Fernino. So this is the sort of the down and back bit that they get. So for a lot of the competitors, they'll go down, they'll do a U-turn, they'll be able to see their competition. With Jan with about a three and a half minute lead, he may get to see them at some point. But and he's probably going to be at least one switch back further on. Oh, another, another European, <laughs> Gustav Eden. We knew that these were the two powerhouses, really, Gustav Eden and Jan Fredino, and they are delivering yeah. on, you know, they're both world champions. They both know how to race at the very, very top end. But how different is this? Gustav looks great. Gustav looks in control. He looks full of running. Yeah. He looks like he's just out doing his thing that he is completely conditioned to do, and he's in control of this. So he's someone who's, yeah, hopefully winning those bonus points for Team Europe, but he's doing it his way. You know, Jan's had to dig <laughs> so deep for this today. Let's quickly go out to uh, match number 10 here. Wow. Because and we've seen Daniel Beckergaard has made the pass. Yes, yeah. yes. Overtaken Ben Canute, who Ben Canute in both getting onto the bike, he took off, opened up a big gap, yep. and then was caught by Daniel Beckergaard. Opened up a big gap again at the start of the run with another fast transition. But again, Daniel Beckergaard has and come back. And he looked great, didn't he? Going out onto the run, he looked smooth. He looked like he got into his rhythm really well. Whereas Daniel seemed to struggle for that first sort of, you know, kilometer or so that we were watching them. And then uh, as we've gone back to them now, Daniel is full of running and he has passed. I don't think I've seen Jan look like this, not in his face, not visually, just so exhausted. No. This and that he's digging so deep. I don't know the last time I've seen him look like this. Yes, and I think there's maybe a little bit of ego in there that he wants to have the fastest time of the day, perhaps. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe. Yeah, and it wouldn't surprise me. He wins everything else and sets records everywhere else. It's probably like, <laughs> that's an added bonus. It's no but look at him come in. He, he's excited now. I think that's now gone from a grimace to a bit more of a, a, bit more of a smile half there. There we go. Half smile. We'll give him a half and half That's now. a half half, but there's still quite a grimace. Yeah, yeah that was almost out. a smile. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Here he comes. What a terrific start for the men's section of the Collins Cup. Remember, this is a team race, and this is game going to be another victory for Europe as the world number one ranked athlete crosses the line and said, wow, I think I'm happy that's over. Oh, congrats, mate. That had to hurt. You know, when you look at somebody like that and you get that moment to stop, you can almost feel his pain, can't you, when you see oh, that? Yeah. He, he is not standing up straight. He's just, just, give me a, just give me a moment. Do you ever feel it, especially in this one, because it was all about your name and it was all about gunning for you? You know, I, I was really looking forward to the Sam and Sam show. And, um, uh, yeah, when you bring the toys and, the, and, and you want to play, and <laughs> it turns out a little different. But we'll see when they come in now. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to a few more battles with them in the future. So as we approached the business end of things, it was clear that the Europeans were now firmly in control of their own destiny in the race for the Collins Cup. Let's get back out on course now, catch up with match number nine here. Lionheart. Lionel, Lionel who also is another man who always looks like he's in pain, but that's always deceptive from uh, from Lionel Sanders. You can never never tell too much from what he looks like or what's on his face or the stride. Sometimes he looks like he's limping just that side on angle. It's never a flattering one for Lionel, but he's so efficient, he's so fast, and he just races on heart. He is just the most unbelievable athlete. I'm noticing here that, okay, Andrew Starkovich is now 127 back. He was 36 seconds back. And Sebastian Kinley was three minutes, and now he's down to 236. So Sebastian Kinley moving up, yeah. Andrew Starkovich moving back. I'm not sure uh, Sebastian will be able to catch Lionel. I think he is running faster than Lionel Sanders, but he might be able to catch up to Starkovich. 
Well, we're still not going to call it for Europe. I don't think we'll do that just yet, but we are watching Gustav Eden make it into the stadium here. One of the great performances of the day once we get the overall time splits, because this, this was a performance that he's come swim, bike, run across the board. And here he comes into the stadium, still looking comfortable. I haven't seen a grimace from him yet. But I think he's going to get some big points here as well once we get a better indication of where second and third are. Yeah. As he swings up, this is going to be a, a nice finish here and a, a big applause for him as well. They've been watching him on the big screens here in the centre. As he comes in, grabs the tape, and there we are. <laughs> the team boys, in fact, uh, Jan waiting for him to finish there. Well, look at Daniel Beckergaard here. Doesn't he look phenomenal? Excellent. This is the new generation too here. I mean, the, the Team Europe, when you look at Jan Fredin, oh, okay, he's 40, but Gustav Eden at 25, and now Daniel Beckergaard is the, the new young guy as they well. Are. Yes. They are really delivering, aren't they? I mean, Ben Knut is no slouch. This guy is incredible, and we've just watched Daniel Beckergaard move in front of Ben to take the lead in this race. That's Lionel Sanders coming in now. Just a matter of interest, guys. This this limp by Lionel, is this from his, his previous injury or what? What's no, the situation? That's just the way he runs. We've gone we've oh, gone he always runs like he's always run like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it works right. for him. It actually works for him and, and we scratch our heads, but it's uh, you know, we see beautiful running strides and, and then you see Lionel. You know yes. <laughs> Well <laughs> I wasn't gonna say that, but I mean the guy Whoa! Oh, oh, he's, oh, he's gone the wrong side of the ropes there. So I, I think they're going to let him... Oh, well. That was only about a couple of metres short. He should be OK with that. Um, although I don't want to speak out of turn. The, well, surely he's... It didn't uh, look like he got a short no, way of doing it. He no, shaved no distance. No, I mean, no, no, I think that... But it just shows you he's really pushing all the way to the finish line. He didn't even realise that he needed to be on the uh, right side of that mm. rope. And no fault for, for his own. There was no one standing actually pointing which side. So, no, um, that's right. But, you know, here he is. He, he's only got a couple hundred metres to go now. And, again, he's not slowing down either. No. Uh, you know, they, they all want these bonus splits. They all want these bonus times. And this has been the, the, the way the Collins Cup have put this together. Exactly. A very, a, what yeah, a great very, way very to do it. Way. That we're not just looking at first, second, third in each race. That they've made it so we're going to make it so you guys race to the finish, every single one of you. And uh, none of them are getting the chance to sit back. No, it's, and, it's cruise, and enjoy that finish line. No. I haven't seen one person no. take it easy across the finish line. No. Oh, it's hurting him right to the last corner here as Lionel Sanders comes in. The Colonel's at it again now. He's still suffering, but the tape is just around the corner. And this will be a victory for the international squad as he makes this final corner into the home seat. And uh, remember that Fredino's got the best time. He'll find out uh, what this time is when it's all over. But right now, enjoy the moment. The international team has got themselves a winner. That was a tremendous fight from Lionel Sanders all the way. Hung on in the swim to Andrew Starkovich. One of the better swims I think I've ever seen of his. I've raced those guys many, many times. We've had a lot of great battles between us all. And uh, this was just another one. This was There was no tactics here. This was just uh, hard right from the gun. I mean, my goal was to ride with Starkey. And uh, I had a little boo-boo coming around the corner and, and went too quick over the, the, uh, the paint and slipped. This might be the end of it for me, but fortunately I was okay and I was able to get back into it. This is a big guard coming in. And what a performance from this young man. This was absolutely outstanding. Not a surprise. Now we're just being informed that this finish Very will mean important. that Team Europe has won the inaugural Collins Cup. Wow. This win, Daniel Beckergaard to come in, is giving the win to Team Europe. So victory for Team Europe, but there are still, of course, uh, two more matches still to finish. But 
the men have excelled and that man there, Norman Stadler, predicted they would win every event, including the women's races, so he wasn't right. He wasn't right. But he wasn't far off. He wasn't wrong either. <laughs> uh, they've, they've done exceptionally well. They have delivered on winning it. There, there was a lot of pressure on them to make sure that they did win. Um, and they have delivered. They're, 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 I mean, we've been able to see some great wins from Team USA and the internationals, which has been nice to see that it has been so dominant. No. Um, but it definitely, they have delivered. Uh, and this new young guard, Gustav Eden and Daniel, Daniel Beckergaard, they have really stepped up as well. Congratulations. I don't know whether you know, but you just won it for Team Europe. So massive, well done. Yeah, thanks a lot. That was, uh, that was, that was a tough race. Wow. You know, with the thunders uh, in the beginning, and then uh, just you know started started out with a tactical uh, tactical swim, um, and I did uh, some uh, bad navigations. Um, clearly, on the swim. Yeah, I clearly missed the buoy like uh, like a mile or so. That's how it is. Um, yeah, and then out on the on the bike course, and I knew if I didn't make any mistakes, then I would be in a in a good solid position for the run. And then I just took off. His result has confirmed that the Collins Cup will be won by Team Europe, uh, but we've still got two more uh, matches to finish. Well, here we go. There's the, there's the move from Jackson Laundry. This reminds me of the great old days of the Ironman between Dave Scott ah, yes. and Mark Allen. They're both here watching yes. this, and they're, they're so enthusiastic because they're great athletes and they're two great people. Second time for oh, here we go. Now, this is a surge from Jackson Laundry. He has picked up the pace, and Joe Skipper, that string could break any moment here. It looks like it's about five meters gap. And here we come, Braden Curry coming in to finish match 11. And what a dominating performance for Braden Curry for the international team. Absolutely incredible. Braden Curry gets another win for the internationals. A late surge as he breaks the tape. All oh, smile. That is a great result for Braden Curry because I, I might be wrong, but I would have expected Patrick Langer to have possibly been the winner here. But Braden Curry has done it tremendously. Another win for the international squad as well. Nice sign of a good race right there. There's the uh, projected standing still until we get Jackson across the line. But they're going to call him home now. And this will give uh, four victories for the international squad on the day. America's got two victories. Uh, the red numbers on the right and uh, the blues are the Europeans who have won the Collins Cup. But right now it is Jackson Laundry, the Canadian, the 38-year-old who wins match number 12 and brings to a close the Collins Cup with outstanding success yeah! here in Shamrin. And he's telling us so. Yes, oh, steady on there. <laughs> I think he's happy, Phil. <laughs> this is how it has all finished. The final result, Team Europe getting 42.5 points to Team US 31.5 and Team International, what a flurry at the end that they came up with, uh, 25.5. It really has been a tremendous debut for the Collins Cup and I hope we see it for many more years to come. Congratulations. I know that during the very lead up to this, it was all about Europe being favourites, but were you a little bit worried at one point, especially during the swim? I mean, I was worried and then I started, I felt so much pain when I saw Daniela running and when I saw Holly crashing, I knew I just, I just crashed too. So I, I felt the pain she had and, but the team spirit was so good. I mean, they, they could have reasons to stop because they didn't feel well, but they, they kept going. And so they stopped the others from scoring, which kindly turned out perfect. So that was a great team, team spirit. For sure, we love to win. We're excited that we're not going home with a broken spoke. And the bottom line is, I think that all of our athletes put out an effort that really uh, raised some eyebrows. And, and a lot of races were won that were surprises for the folks out there. So it was super, super exciting for us as captains. After the women's swim, it was USA were flying away with it, and I saw a few worried looks on Norman and Tasha's faces, thinking, "Oh my God, this maybe is not as easy as we thought it was." I was taking pictures of the scoreboard early on because I'm like, "This 
is uh, just setting a tone, you know, that whatever you thought before the race, you better change your thinking because our athletes are exceeding expectations today. And that's just how it went all day. I felt like everybody just really um, went for it and, um, and never gave up, even if they got behind and uh, every second ended up counting. So it was great. Give us a word on the men because they were incredible. They got win after win. Jan Fredino, then it was Elan, and it just carried on from there. Yeah, it's it's amazing to watch how 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 strong those athletes are. Uh, Gustav Eden, he's 25, and but also heads up to Lionel Sanders. He he did an Ironman last weekend, and yeah, yeah. he won his match. So uh, all over perfect results, and uh, yeah, we won the Collins Cup, but I thought it will be much easier. Team Europe! Woo! <laughs> he doesn't he, do, he doesn't like chicken dance. Oh, no, he doesn't I, like chicken dance, I but I like think it's great. <laughs> it, is that the dance of Europe then, is it? The chicken it's dance. It's only Swiss. <laughs> it's only Swiss, but it, it worked out great, didn't it? Yeah. It, it did. You have to catch the chicken before you eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that was the motivation. So Norman, is it here to stay? For Europe. Of course. <laughs> I think we'll finish there. <laughs> And so, after 12 wonderful races, the first edition of the Collins Cup had been concluded. Success for Europe, who'd lived up to all the pre-tournament hype, and for the US and the international teams, no victory, but heads could certainly be held high, with all 36 athletes showing incredible fortitude, endurance and determination. Absolutely no doubt about it, the inaugural Collins Cup has delivered, and in quite some style. Roll on next year, but from all of us in Chamarine, it's goodbye for now.